Hey, this is Dwyer Brown. I played John Kinsella in the movie Field of Dreams, and you're watching the Amato Podcast. Hey, guys. Want to have a catch? Here we are. Today, I'm talking to Stacey Chalemi. Stacey's on a mission to transform the health of millions worldwide. Uh, she's the author of The Complete Guide to Natural Healing and Natural Remedies for Common Conditions, which is very pertinent to uh, everything that's going on today, uh, along with 20 other published books, which is amazing. Uh, she's the founder of The Complete Herbal Guide and a recognized health and natural remedies expert with over 20 years in practice as a health coach. Um, she has written for The Huffington Post, uh, Thrive Global and Medium. Um, you've been a guest on the Dr. Oz show, local news and numerous radio shows. That's, that's a nice bio. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you coming in today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you having me on your show. Sure. Could you give everybody just a brief um, background of you? Well, I started um, with... Uh, I had basically, you know, when I first came, um, started, I started writing in college as just a hobby. And, you know, I had um, developed ep epilepsy at the age of five years old. And I had um, struggled all my life with uh, coping with seizures and ha getting my seizures under control. And as I went into um, college, it was had become a, a real struggle, you know, the, the late night studying, the stresses, you know, that college takes and, you know, on you. And I was starting to get an increased number of seizures due to the stress that I was dealing with from college. And I had written an article and I had sent it into the um, Epilepsy Foundation. They have a newspaper and I asked them to publish it. And it was, I asked them to ask other people, how do they cope with epilepsy? How do they deal with this disorder? Because it was so hard to, you know, I wanted to move on. I had such high goals for myself and I just didn't know if I was going to be able to reach those goals. And Surprisingly, I had uh, received over three to 400 letters from all over the United States and Canada from people who had epilepsy, which sharing their stories, explaining how they dealt with epilepsy and things that they do to get through um, each day and, and to make their lives better. And I was so uh, amazed. And, you know, at that moment, I felt that, you know, I'm not alone. You know, there are so many people out there because back in the day, there was maybe like four or five books on epilepsy and they were written by doctors and basically the doctors turned terminologies and those books kind of went over your head. If you didn't have a medical degree, you had no idea what these doctors were talking about. And, you know, that kind of annoyed me in a sense, you know, because it's like, how are people going to actually, you know, how can they get help, you know, if they don't, you know, have the, 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 the knowledge or the, the resources to, you know, to find ways to, to, you know, help their disorder. So I started writing and I had, I hadn't finished that book. I kind of put it to the side because I was, you know, working in college. And then as I went along, I had started with a big corporation um, in uh, New York. I had started working with them when I finished college and um, I had had a seizure. I had fell to the floor and a producer had saw me have a seizure and he kind of walked over me and kept walking. And, uh, you know, 30 minutes later, I was I was uh, um, let go of my position and I was really, you know, I, I didn't let it get to me. I, you know, it was upsetting, but I, I didn't let it get to me. And I had just started my uh, when uh, my in-laws had started a business, I decided to help them, you know, get their business off the ground. And I started working on that book and I had published that book and I had uh, it had received number one on the in the. Um, on Amazon and it became very popular. People had written to me and, and told me that, you know, I had one person told me that they, I saved their life. The, the, the stories and the things I shared in the, <clears throat> excuse me, the things I shared in the book, the, the, all the things that, you know, the suggestions and the and the different tools and techniques help them get through their living with their disorder. And at that point, I finally realized that, you know, the words of wisdom is so powerful. When you do a, either a podcast or you write, you know, or write an article or you share something, you don't re really realize how you're affecting other people's lives. You know, you know, people, you know, strive to find information every day. They don't know where to begin, you know. And, you know, at that point, I started realizing 
you know, I could actually help people, you know, and, you know, I, I, you know, these people who sent me all their letters helped me. I wrote a book and then I was helping, you know, hundreds of others. So I wanted to take a step further. And then I started a little blog, you know, on Blogger back then. And, uh, you know, it had like 400 people come on the site. And then I had, um, it had, I had created a website from that. And it, it actually, I went to 10,000 and then I had started working with a, um, a, a gentleman who designed websites he goes you know I could really make this look really nice for you and he's he created a website for me with all the information from blogger and it, it it rose to a couple hundred thousand people coming on the website and at that point I realized you know it's not just about epilepsy it's about everything you know people that struggle with all types of illnesses disorders uh, diseases and you know there are lots of ways to cope with it you know and I also did a lot of freelance writing too and a lot of the freelance uh, work that I did I was working for early herbalist and he had me do a lot of research and this is where the actual herbs and natural resources and all this other stuff came in as I was actually doing all this research and writing and creating articles and journals for him I, I took a lot of that information and I applied it to my own life and it actually helped me and helped my condition my seizures started to decrease my health started to improve and my life was actually getting better and I you know I started to actually you know take what I have learned I learned and the things that I was going through and all the research that I was doing and writing I created the book epilepsy you I not the, um ep, uh, my herbal book um at the complete herbal guide and I started basing my website off of that I started writing about different herbals and how it could help each condition and I just over the years I just grew and grew and grew and then people you know started to write and and you know, a lot of doctors and professionals wanted to share their information, and it just, it just, it just grew out of uh, control in a good way, you know. So this is where I am today. <laughs> <laughs> back, back to the herbs. So I'm all about being healthy. If you looked in my lunchbox right below me, there's a lot of uh, supplements <laughs> and things like that. Because it seems like when you take, you know, if your doctor gives you a medicine, maybe that medicine helps you for for what you're taking the medicine for. But now you have another side effect. Right. Now you have to take a medicine for that. Now, by the time you're done, you're on four or five different medications. How how can um, herbs help us in, in yeah. normal life? I see that happen all the time. You know, so many people have shared with me, you know, they were on one medication and they had received a, you know, a side effect from the medication. Then they went back, told their doctor, you know, hey, I'm feeling this way. And the doctor gave them another prescription to help, you know, sub to make that um, side effect go away. And before you knew it, they had four or five drugs they were taking. And a lot of these drugs, you know, can be very harmful. But, you know, I'm not against drugs at all. I'm actually, you know, I take epilepsy. I, I take medication for my epilepsy. If it wasn't, you know, it's the medication and the healthy living combined that makes my epilepsy, you know, controlled. You know, if I if if I didn't take the medication and I just relied on herbs, I don't think my, my seizures, because they were so in-depth and so out of control, I don't think it would just be able to, I would be able to control my seizures with just herbs and, and healthy living. And I think I, I needed the medication and some people do me need medication, but there are a lot of things that you could actually improve in your life with eating healthy and using food for medicine and using herbals, you know, like even, you know, uh, you can improve your, your uh, immunity system by using turmeric and ginger. You know, a lot of people like to do tea. They like the because the turmeric and the ginger taste really good together. You know, there are different ways that, you know, you can actually use um, different herbs to help high cholesterol and to help high blood pressure. And, you know, because there's a lot of static drugs that are really harmful and can control, you know, make a lot of, you know, side effects off the off the top of, uh, you know, my head. And, and, you know, it's it's crazy. So, you know, it's good to try and to see if you could actually, you know, you know, make your life, you know, healthier by using herbals, you know, and, and, and different, you know, healthy foods too, because a lot of people like, you know, they don't feel good. And I say, well, what are you eating? And their diet is totally out of control, you know, because, you know, people don't realize it, but your body, every time you eat food it goes into your body. And if your body doesn't know what this is, if it has a lot of toxins and impurities in it, because a lot of the stuff today, you know, just to make it, you know, fresher on the shelves and to make it look plumper and, and to make it look, you know, really good marketing wise, they, they, you know, put a lot of different toxic uh, ingredients ingredients 
And a lot of even like the the punches, you see the red dye for the punch, you know, for fruit punch, you know, that stuff could be cancerous. It could cause cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know, people, you know, they, they put chick in chicken, they, they have, they insert it with like arsenic, you know, different things to, to make it, you know, uh, you know, look better and make it plumper and, and juicier. And, you know, these things could actually, you know, do damage, you know, they're saying, well, it's only a little bit, but if you eat a lot of chicken and you eat a lot of this or drink a lot of this in time, your body body, you know, is taking these toxins, doesn't know what to do with it. It's storing in your body and it's actually weighing down all your organs. And it's actually, you're starting to feel fatigue. You're not feeling focused. You don't feel well. You're gaining weight. All these things are happening. And then you're running to the doctor, you know, and trying to get, get all these different drugs to make you feel better when it's your diet, you know, and people have to take that in, into consideration as well. Chicken is a good example. I just know that for, for myself because I, I used to be into bodybuilding pretty heavily. And when you go mm -hmm. to your regular supermarket and um, you see those really plump, juicy chicken breasts, just look yeah. at the ingredients. They definitely inject them with um, at least salt water. I don't know what else they're putting in. But when you order yeah. your chicken fresh or go to a place who has fresh chicken, the, the chicken breasts are, are a lot smaller. Yeah. Uh, but they taste better and they're, they're healthier for you. So definitely uh, food is, is number one. And you'll notice too, like if you go on the scale the next day, your water retention will be a lot heavier mm. too. You'll gain a few pounds because of the inflammation, because your body doesn't know what to do with the impurities in that chicken. For, for us who have issues, you, you, you brought it up at a little bit, blood pressure and cholesterol. What do we look for in, in some herbs that might help with that? Um, you know, there are a lot of different herbs uh, that could help with that. Uh, uh, red yeast rice is, is really good um, for, you know, that helps with um, high cholesterol. Um, there's like, a, there's a lot of different, you know, things off the top of my head. I can't think of them because my memory is really poor. You know, a lot of times like I write everything down and stuff like that. I don't have any notes in front of me, but there are, there are a couple of really good, um, you know, popular, uh, you know, by, uh, uh, supplements that you could use to help with high cholesterol to help with, you know, red yeast rice is, is really, really good. It, it helps a lot with, um, you know, uh, with um, a high, uh, high um, cholesterol. And they use it actually in a lot of medications too. But people don't know too is when they make medications, they use a lot of supplements in the medication as well. Hmm. Uh, okay. So when I first talked to you, we didn't have this, the, this virus going on and we had scheduled our podcast. So I had my you know, basic questions about everything that you do, but now we're dealing with uh, stress, normal stress, yeah, compa compounded by people are uh, you know not working. You just told me that your your husband is a chiropractor and he's not working. We're really not working. Uh, I own a painting company. Um, yeah, how do we deal with with that increased anxiety? You know, I. There's a, you know, it's really a stressful time and, and a lot of people, you know, we, we, you know, especially when we don't know what to expect, the fear of the unknown is, is, is you know, tremendous on, you know, anxiety and, and, you know, the fear of what's going to happen, you know, how am I going to pay my bills, you know, who, who's going to pay my car payments, how am I going to pay for my mortgage, and, you know, you know, some things you can do too is, um, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff out there, you know, you, you need the right resources because there are a lot of information out there that is incorrect and making people really scared on the internet, you know, and a lot of times, like, I'll see the news, they'll post the most scariest statistics, or they say the most scariest things on and it's freaking people out you know um you know they're, they're talking about all the deaths and they're talking about all the things happening but there are uh, you know over 85 percent of the people are going to get through this fine that that contract it you know it's not it's you know it, it's it's something you know that you should actually i think the cdc um is really good for getting information for um finding the proper um, statistics and information on, on the coronavirus. Um, you know, you have to go to websites that are reputable. The government websites are really good. They, they're, they're posting actual numbers that are actually, you know, statistically correct. And they're given a lot of good tips and tools on, you know, how to cope with it. Also, you know, yoga is very good too. Just the stretching and just, you know, maybe put in relaxing music in the background or just clearing your mind and, and doing a little bit of yoga. They have yoga um, that you can find on YouTube basically um, just for anxiety. There are certain poses hmm. that actually stimulate relaxation and clearing of the mind. And if you go on, on, on YouTube and you type yoga for anxiety, there'll be a bunch of really good videos that will pop up right away. 
And then you could also do music therapy. Music therapy is very relaxing as well. You know, if people are really, you know, feeling the anxiety and, and not be able to focus, take like 15 minutes in a, in a room that's quiet, close the door. You know, there are like, again, you can go on YouTube. There are specific music that is actually relaxing to the mind and actually calms you down. And you can close your eyes and you just focus on the music and you just try to clear your brain, not think of anything and just focus on the tunes you'll see a, 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 a huge um, improvement in, in the way you're feeling. You'll start to feel more relaxed, more calm, you know, and you can put, a, you know, think about a, an image that really makes you relax, something that you enjoy, something that you like, and, you know, just focus on that one image, and that can help you as well. Yeah. Are, there, are there any specific herbs we should be looking at for, for stress or anxiety off the top um, of your head? The, the 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 different things is, is lavender is really good for um, stress and anxiety and you can not even just put you could put it on your on your skin where you can smell it or you could put it on your pillow a lot of people or have trouble sleeping at night on my bracelet on I have a bracelet. bracelet yeah I have a bracelet I carry around yep. Yeah, you know, that's really good. You know, that's like the number one thing that's really good. And even like if you if people like to take baths, they can use like, you know, Epsom salts that have the lavender scent to it. You know, their uh, um, calamine is really good. It's it's very relaxing. It's another flower. And um, it's just like lavender, but it just has a different scent to it. But it's it's very relaxing. Passion um, flower is a really good um, supplement herb that helps with relaxation. And it actually helps you to sleep at night. Some people will take it. And they'll take it before they go to bed. You could even they have like a supplement in a in a capsule form, or you could take it underneath your tongue, and it actually makes you very relaxed. It's kind of like a Xanax, but mm. a natural form of it. So people, I don't know if they realize, but stress and anxiety can physically make you feel sick or make you sick. So uh, yeah. you know, stomach issues, digestion issues, um, headaches, uh, skin issues, and also we we talked before hair issues. Could yeah. you talk about could you talk about the hair issues for men and women? Well, you know, stress is one of the major things that could cause um, hair loss. People don't realize it. You know, a lot of times when we think of hair loss, we think of just the men, you know, and, you know, because for some reason, you know, people, you know, don't like to talk as much about hair loss for women. Um, a lot of women struggle with hair loss, almost as just as men. You know, men have more hair loss than women, but women are just right underneath them. And there's millions of women in the United States alone that suffer from hair loss. And, uh, you know, over time, you know, stress could actually cause a lot of hair loss you know it could be from your DNA um, you know in your genetics um, but stress definitely can cause hair loss a lot of people have um, experienced hair thinning and hair loss from stress and you know there are different things that you can you can do um, there are different you know if you start to see yourself you know experience some hair loss you should try um, different natural ways um, one thing that I, I like um, there's a, a company um, they have hair uh, restore um, they have shampoo and conditioners uh, that they, they create and they have serums that can actually help uh, regain the hair loss that you're experiencing because a lot of times people don't realize but the testosterone increase um, turns into um, uh, a form of DHT which is a hormone and it can make the hair follicles actually smaller and then it blocks, you know, it could cause the hair loss where these shampoos and conditioners um, block the DHT and it actually can help your hair follicles actually go, uh, you can grow hair and it can, and it and opens up the hair follicles so, you know, your hair doesn't, you know, uh, when, uh, you, can, you can actually get the hair, the hair growth and it's not, your, your hair loss isn't permanent. And um, there are different, you know, Things. They have caffeine, biotin, you know, these are different supplements that are really good. I like, you know, biotin is very good. I actually take biotin and I use the shampoo and conditioner myself. And I actually, when I was went to the hairdresser, she, she had made a comment that my hair looked so much thicker and healthier, you know, and uh, my hair was actually starting to grow more, more rapidly. Um, you know, I actually have my, my husband on it now and I have my son who's in college and he's, he's starting to experience the little hair loss on the sides, you know, so he's, he started using it as well but there are lots of different you know supplements and and you know, it's really good when you can you, you know there's so many things out there you know and I've tried a lot of different things and you know but this company you know hair restorations makes a really good 
product and I've actually seen a lot of, you know, success with it. I've even, you know, companies have sent me like the helmets, you know, that you can put on and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we didn't, re you know, we, I had someone had had alopecia try it and she didn't really receive that much success with it. Um, you know, but with this, with this product, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, improvement in my hair growth and my husband's hair growth. And my son is starting to see, you know, his hair is um, starting to become a little thicker, he said, you know, so mm. it's, uh, it's been, you know, but caffeine is really good. Biotin is really good. Green tea extract is really good for the hair, you know, and these are different supplements that can actually, you know, help with hair loss. And you mentioned it for, for back to bodybuilding for bodybuilders who take testosterone and, and they're going to, no matter what, uh, yeah. what if anybody says, it yeah. converts to DHT. And that's yes. why if you look at bodybuilders who take a lot of steroids, their hair is thin or they don't have hair. Right. Uh, so exactly. there's a good, there's a good product to try. That's awesome. Yeah. How about the role of, of CBD in dealing with stress, anxiety, and just, just everyday natural uh, living? You know, CBD is very, very good to try, you know, but uh, you also have to make sure if you're taking anybody before, you know, when they, when they try supplements, if you have, you are taking medication, you have to just make sure your medication doesn't interact. Like for instance, um, there are certain, um, medications that CBD can interact and cause like, um, like for the medication Keppra, which is used for, um, epilepsy and it's used for, um, depression and it's used for, you know, different types of, um, um, different types of illnesses, um, you know, it could actually reduce the potency of the medication. So if you if you're going to try CBD and you're taking medication, just check with your doctor, you know, and make sure that the medication it's not going to interact with the medication. But CBD is very good for stress. It's very good for relaxation. It's very good um, for lots of different things. It even helps with pain. It helps with um, many things, and um, it's a form of um, uh, um, from the marijuana leaf probably has over 1,000 different types of strains in it and it's the it's the part of the leaf where it doesn't have the THC and it's pure and it helps to um, actually you know it could it, it, it will block certain things in the brain to help you relax and to help you um, feel more calmer and you know I I've taken the capsules I've tried the 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 serum and I've tried the the gummies and I actually like the gummies the best for me personally and you have to also make sure if you're going to buy CBD, you have to make sure you find a good company that's really um, good and has a good reputation. Mm. Charlotte's Web is a company that I, I deal with that is very good. They have they've actually helped a lot of people and they had a, they've gotten a lot of um, media exposure because their their company makes good quality CBD. And um, there's other companies like I like I like Nature Script. I like their um, their gummies worked really well. And um, there, you know, people, it, it, everybody's body works differently. So what works for me may not work for you. So you know, but make sure that when you before you buy CBD, you know, look up the company, look up their reputation, and you know, make sure it's a, a good quality CBD. Do you have opinion, an opinion on medical marijuana in in a healthy lifestyle? I, I've, I'm for mar medical marijuana in a healthy lifestyle. I've seen many people in the epilepsy community that take it for, um, for their seizures and have had, you know, success with it. Um, you know, you really have to, you know, I would, you know, they, they are trying it with um, patients and, and so forth, but you have to, I think you have to talk to your, your doctor too, you know, because you can't just, you know, wean yourself off of, um, if you're, ha if you, if you're taking, you know, medical marijuana for, you know, and you're taking medication, you can't, you know, some of these medications, your body comes physically dependent on the medication you're taking. So I've seen people try to take take themselves off a of medication and they've had a very bad experience. You know, if, you know, if you want to try medical marijuana, I think you need to discuss it with your doctor first. And, you know, because they are trying it in, in a lot of the different fields, even for pain. Um, it works really well with pain. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people who experienced a lot of pain, had a lot of pain reduction um, when they've used the medical marijuana. So, but you need to really, I think this is something you have to talk with your doctor as well. If you have an actual illness that you're, you know, you're battling with, you know, maybe speak to your doctor or speak to, you know, and if your doctor is not for it and you really want to try it, find a doctor who supports it and that actually can work with you, you know, because, try, you know, trying to be your own doctor sometimes doesn't always work either. I was just going to say it, it's you have to find that doctor who who is who's a progressive and up to date and wants to to learn new things because 
a lot of times just going to the doctor and, you know, you want to discuss, um, you know, using hormones uh, in the right way or using medical marijuana in the right way. A lot of them will just shut you, shut you right down and won't even talk to you about it. So yeah. definitely look around for a doctor that can help you. And if they won't help you, find another doctor. Yeah, and, and the, the one bad thing right now is that every state has their own um, laws and regulations. So, you know, like, you know, people, I've seen people move out of the states and move to different states. You know, I, there was one little girl, she had uncontrollable seizures. And, you know, the medical marijuana um, in, in one state that she was living in, um, they just, they gave the parents, because the parents tried everything, they gave the parents a bunch of leaves and said, here, you know, because it was just the, you know, it, and then they, they went to Colorado and, and, you know, over there they had they had found organic marijuana and it was they they actually uh, took the strains out for the girl little girl seizures. And, you know, they actually, you know, it's just every state is different because the rules and regulations are different. And, um, you know, sometimes you, you have to, you know, really look into it, do your research and, you know, and, you know, because you might have to, you know, you have to you have to really find out, you know, what's actually going to work, you know, and you can't, you know, medical marijuana, you know, can have a lot of different strains in it and you have to get the right strains. You know, you can't just smoke, you know, some marijuana and think it's going to help you, you know, it, you know, it's just, uh, you know, you have to, there's specific strains in a marijuana leaf for specific things that could actually help specific things. So you really need to have a, a, a doctor or a medical, you know, facility extract the, the strains that are going to help your specific illness or condition. I have uh, a few friends who, who use medical marijuana, and just as you just said, it's not as simple as as no. um, just going to get what you want. There's yeah, it, it'll blow your mind. Um, <laughs> organic is it is it important when I go to the supermarket? Uh, can it make a big difference if I'm if I'm shopping organically? As and I I I um I actually suggest that um you know it's it's very hard a lot of people you know they live on a budget and you know or when you go into a, a food store there the the organic stuff is really expensive it could be double the price or it could be a third higher of the price and you know for people who do really well for themselves it, you know it's fine it's no problem but for someone who struggles on a weekly basis and is making ends meet or you know is on a limited budget you know buying everything organic is just not realistic, you know. Um, I think there are specific foods that should be organic, you know, like we mentioned, the chicken and certain meats. I, I think if you can afford to buy the organic meats, you, you should. You know, um, I also suggest for eggs and milk, you should definitely do organic. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, things nowadays, like you'll see a lot of little girls are experiencing menstruation at a very young age. You'll see a lot of, um, you know, things happening um, because uh, the hormones in the eggs and the milk actually changed um, a lot of the, the body structure, um, you know, and caused the, because they were extracting, they were, you know, injecting the, the cows, like for instance, with all different hormones and antibiotics. Um, because if you, I read a book um, that one lady I knew, an author, she had given me, and she, she, you know, she did studies on, you know, what was going on. They would put hundreds of cows in one specific small area, and these cows would be extracted. You know, they would give them antibiotics. One cow would get sick, and they would give all the cows antibiotics. You know, they were they were so they were pushed together, and and they were, you know, they were giving them hormones to make them, you know, bigger, so they can, you know, they can get more milk from them. Them and and it was terrible because all all these things we're dr we're drinking those hormones and we're drinking you know the antibiotics and what is that doing to our bodies you know and like as I mentioned the, the hormones that they were given the the cows were actually making the little girls you know um, menstruate at an earlier age some girls were going through menstruation at the age of eight you mm -hmm. know and it was just changing their bodies they were starting to you know they were starting to get figures that they shouldn't get until they were teens you know and developing breasts and things like that because of the hormones the hormones were changing the structure of their body and it can change your your brain and your thinking pattern could, hormones could do a lot to you you know our bodies are you know function off of hormones so you know and eggs are the same thing they put they put hundreds of eggs um, chickens together and you know they do the same things with the chickens and stuff like that so you 
you know, if you're, people eat a lot of eggs and you're eating eggs every day, you know, you should do the organic because these are things that actually, you know, you don't want those hormones. You don't want all those, you know, antibiotics, you know, and, and the foods that you eat the most. And most people drink a lot of milk and they drink a lot of, you know, they, they, you know, eat a lot of eggs for breakfast. So it's, you know, and especially bodybuilders, I know that they, you know, can eat like three, four eggs just for the protein, you know, so you really, those are things that you should, um, actually eat, you know, organically, you know, things that, you know, make a difference, you know, like bananas. I don't think you really need to have organic bananas. I don't think, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, there, there are certain things that, you know, don't make a difference, but meats, cold cuts, different things like, you know, I would try to, you know, eat organically, you know, um, you have to really be judgmental and think about it. And then, you know, maybe do a little research and reading on, on different, you know, they'll, you'll, you'll see a lot of different health nutritionists and, and they'll suggest what foods matter the most, you know, you can go on online and, you know, there are a lot of uh, health coaches that will, you know, that you can find out what you could type in, what foods do I you need to eat organically, you know, you know, and the people you'll see, nutritionists, you know, uh, popular nutritionists, you know, list different lists of foods that really matter and foods, if you can't afford it, you know, it, it doesn't really, you know, pick, take a toll on your body. If we talk, uh, can we talk about um, sexual health in terms of uh, libido and using herbs that may be able to help a, a couple who maybe, maybe the husband doesn't have a, the, the same libido as the wife, up or down? Yeah. Um, how can we, how can we use herbs in a healthy lifestyle to to at least help us out any way we could. You know, um, there's a lot of, you know, as we get older, a lot of, a lot of men, you know, um, ex experience, um, you know, dysfunction uh, where, you know, they're not, their body, they're, you know, they're not getting a, as hard as they were when they were younger. Their experience, you know, their ejaculation doesn't work as well. Um, you know, there are different supplements that actually can help, you know, um, uh, improve a, a male in, in that, in that sense. You know, there are different, you know, um, things, you know, I really suggest too going to your doctor, you know, going to an, um, an herbalist because they actually have different herbs. They have different um, tools that they could actually help. Um, also stress too. Stress plays a big role in, in a relationship. Finances plays a big role. You know, like when you're going through financial times like this, um, you know, a it actually puts a lot of stress on both the, the, the husband and the wife. And, you know, the stress could actually was dysfunction, sexual dysfunction for both the man and the woman. You know, um, it, it can make a woman harder to feel an orgasm. It can make a man harder to get, you know, experience uh, ejaculation and experience, you know, to, and so it, it and it just the, the bonding as well. Just, you know, if people are in stress, they can't connect as well. You know, they're having a hard time, you know, and also when you're, you're working all the time trying to make ends meet and you don't see each other as much, sometimes, you know, um, the bond and kind of separates a little bit. You're not as close, you know. I always suggest too, like it's always good to make a, a, a one day, you know, like date night. Like my husband and I always like to do like a date night. Like on a Friday night, he'll try to get home a little early and we'll go out either for, you know, either have a drink or have a snack, you know, go to a restaurant and just talk because during the week, you know, even though you see each other when, when you get home, you know, you don't get to spend that quality time. And if you have children, you're busy with the children, you're busy, you know, doing stuff, you know, around the house and before you know it it's time to go to bed so you know you don't you, you have to have that connection time and you should make time every you know each week to have a, a day where you could actually spend time talk to each other and also expressing your emotions being able to sp speak with each other and connect and share how you feel you know sometimes people don't like to share you know how they feel or if they're having sexual problems in the bedroom they're embarrassed they don't want to you know and they, they keep it to themselves and, you know, you have to connect with your, each, each other and you, and you should, and if you're not feeling that satisfaction, you should talk to your, your spouse or talk to your partner and, you know, and really you, you have to, you know, work together as a team, you know, you know, in order to, because you, your, your connection, your verbal, you know, speaking to each other, feeling that, that bond, everything plays a role in, in the, in the bedroom and it actually can play a role, you know, with, you know, how, how well you perform in the bedroom, you know, so, you know, you really have to work on, on connection. And if, if you also, if you feel that, you know, cause age and stress can actually, you know, can, you know, cause a lot of problems as well. You know, there are supplements and things that you could do 
to actually improve, you know, because as we get older and even some of the, uh, the blood pressure medicine can actually, you know, cause problems, you know, in the bedroom for, for lots of males. And, you know, and, uh, you know, there are different, you know, medications that could actually do a lot of harm, to, you know, in, in the sexual area. So, you know, you have to, you know, speak with a doctor and herbalists are great, you know, to go to. They have a lot of different, um, different methods and different, different tools and different um, supplements that they can, you know, do. And they also, what they do too, is they do also a, a blood workout where they check, you know, where a primary doctor won't do it, but a, a herbalist will give you a full blood workout to see where you're, you're, where you're lacking, what vitamins you're lacking, what nutrients you're lacking, you know, how, what hormones you're lacking. Because as we get older too, the testosterone declines for both male and women and, and um, you know, and, uh, the, you know, for women, progesterone and all our hormones, you know, we start to, it starts to decline and it starts to, to affect us in many ways. So sometimes, you know, you know, um, hormone therapy is, I, I, I am, I'm all for hormone therapy, you know, that, you know, if you, you ha but you have to, you shouldn't buy it over the shelves because I see it all the time, you know, if they're yeah. selling, you know, the progesterone and the testosterone, you should actually go to a herbalist, you know, find out if you're lacking, you know, what hormones you're lacking and have them, you know, tell you exactly how much you should take and what you should take and what you shouldn't take. And, you know, you'll start to see an improvement. I actually went to a hormone therapist and, you know, I found out that I barely had any testosterone left. You know, my estrogen was fine, but my progesterone was very, you know, I only had a little bit left. You know, it was just like I was really declining. And I felt the ch changes. I was really tired, very fatigued. I didn't want to get out of bed. I felt my, my I was always up and friendly, you know, bubbly type of person. I was feeling my moods change. I wasn't able to focus. There was lots of stuff going on with me. And I, I started noticing it as I started to get into my mid ages. And, you know, and I went to the hormone therapist. They did a full blood workout. They told, you know, they were telling me all the different things I was declining in. I started, you know, um, going by what the doctor said. And in three months, I started feeling an improvement in all areas of my life. Mm. What do you think about IV therapy? I see a lot of the places popping up around us. Um, where you can go in and the same thing basically you just said they do a little blood workup hopefully uh, I, and see, see what you're lacking in I've tried the IV therapy they have like different types you know they have vitamin you know they, they induce you with different types of vitamins and stuff like that and it's really good but it also it you know um, it, it works um, but you have to go a lot and it could be a little costly too. And, mm. you know, in, insurance companies won't cover these type of things, you know, but they do work, you know, they do, they do, it, it boosts you up, you know, with energy, you know, and it can help you in lots of different ways, um, you know, but I've seen a lot of people have had success with it, you know, um, it, you know, for me, I, I prefer just doing the, the hormone therapy because it was just, a, I had to go a lot for the, for the IV treatments and I just didn't have the time to go a, a lot for the IV treatments because you have to sit there it takes time but if this is something if you're willing to do it could actually be beneficial what do you say to a couple where one maybe is very into a healthy lifestyle and and does everything they possibly can and the other could care less and you both live together and you have to kind of mesh this world together yeah, I you know I've seen that, and you know it, what happens is is the one person starts to feel really good and starts to feel better, and their their outlook on themselves starts to really improve, and they start to change, and they actually you know they'll you know sometimes you can become really um, you know not upset with your spouse or, or partner, but like, you know, you get disappointed, you know, because it's, it's easier to, to be a team. Like I've had, you know, I've had, um, friends and even, even my husband and I, we, you know, started getting on a healthy track together and it makes it really much better when you have two people actually boosting each other up, you know, and participate in, in the healthy eating. When you have one person eating bad and then you're eating good, you could easily get, get off track because it's the temptation is there you know and then you know and also you know, you you, you want to see the person you care about you know improve their life but you can't change someone unless they don't unless they want to be changed you know as much as you can try as, as hard as you can you know you can whatever you do and you know say it's unless that person wants to change it's just not going to happen but mm -hmm. it, it makes things difficult when you live in the same household together and, and one person is doing it and one person is not. But you have to focus on you and your goals and what you want for yourself. So if that person is not going to do it and you've tried and tried and tried, just focus on yourself, your needs, and what's best for you. It's perfect. Um, how, how has this virus and, and 
the social distancing affected you and maybe your business? Um, you know, people it, right now, you know, people are, you know, um, closing their businesses up. So, you know, they, they, you know, they, you're not seeing as many people, you know, want to, to, uh, work on different projects and work on different things. So there is a lack of business. And so, you know, it, it's, it's hard, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, you know, everything slows down, you know, income slows down, your business slows down, you know, the stress of, of, you know, I, what's good is that people are still on the internet and they're still you know they want to read and learn so when I post articles you know they're they're there to read them which is really good you know but it, it's hard on a, on a finance area it, you know it, you're not going to see any in any any industry everything's going to go go down you know um, but it's it's uh, it's hard and it, that it's that's you have to try to work with that stress and realize that Right now, this you know we've gone through a lot in our in our time you know through you know if we look on in history all the things that we've been through in life and we've gotten through everything you know just like like we have in the past you know this is a trying time for everyone but we're going to get through it and we're going to overcome it like we've overcome everything else. Well, Stacy, you're awesome. <laughs> <I just wanna laughs> Hopefully, you can make people feel a lot better. I mean, it definitely made me feel better today. How can we find how can we find all of your 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 stuff, all your content? Um, I'm located on the Complete Herbal Guide. Um, it's uh, the completeherbalguide.com, and uh, we have all information on all different topics, from from nutrition to fitness to different illnesses, conditions. Um, you, we have lots of different recipes that we provide. You know, food for medicine and and different ways to improve your life. And we talk about you know yoga, meditation, everything you can think of. And we have a lot of different professionals that come on and they share their articles. We Every day we have um, people sending articles and, you know, with professional backgrounds, you know, sharing their information and their advice. And, uh, you know, it's a great uh resource to actually, you know, um, tr you know, if you're looking to either improve your life or, you know, s you know, keep yourself healthy or looking for ideas, you know, just in, in the health in, you know, world and how you can make your life, you know, he healthy, you know, to stay healthy, happy and productive, you know, come to the complete herbal guide.com. We have lots of information there and you could always shoot us out a question or anything and we'll be happy to respond. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. And we'll put all your links up so everybody can, can go and take a look at you and, and uh, hopefully grab some interesting content that can help them out. So I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank Definitely. you very much. I'll talk to you soon. All righty. Sounds great. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.